you and honor you, God of might. <laughs> Come on, just give him praise. We love you. We worship you. Come on, lift up your voice. Just tell him, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you, we love you God. And all the people that believe that God is a good God said, Amen. Man. Right. Wow. I mean, can I be honest here? Well, of course, I'm not going to tell you a lie, but <laughs> Jesus, hey, wait, wait, let me clarify. Jesus actually said, honestly, honestly. Yes, he did. John 3, 3, verily, verily, honestly, honestly. Because he was trying to communicate something he important. He really meant what he was going to say. There you go. Thanks for helping out, Brenda. Yeah. But the nine o'clock was amazing with their amen this morning, and yep. I thought, nah, you guys aren't going to be able to take it. You did good, man. <laughs> you did good. Give yourself a hand clap. You did really, really good. So, but anyway, well, anything to talk about today? Well, all I know is the first service was fire. That was fire. So okay, you guys are in for a treat today. You preached the paint off the walls. Okay, you're nice. and, and we're excited about that. And you talked about what it means to have faith or be a realist. That was good. Yep. I liked that. Yep. And we just decided in the nine o'clock we're faith people. So I think that's what we're going to do in this service. Amen. <laughs> I know what we did talk about too. So, you know, my computer laptop wouldn't hold a charge. So I kept, you know, I had work to do over the weekend and I said, Brenda, I don't know if it's the cord or if it's the laptop. How many of you ever had that problem with like your laptop or whatever? How many of you do not have a laptop? You still have one of those little, <laughs> that's okay, it's all right. And so anyway, so Brenda comes over and she starts wiggling the cord and then she hooks it up and around something and down and she's like, now don't touch it. And I'm like, Brenda, you have the cord like going up all it around. It worked. But it worked. <laughs> How many of you ever had to do that? So Jared back there at the sound booth, we call him the great brain. He alerted me that my computer, what is it, the port? But we got to talking. Before computers, how many remember the days? And I'm going to ask for a show of hands. How many remember the days where they had those, uh, we called them bunny rabbit ears? Yeah. That you put on your TV. You remember that? Okay, how many? And you had to put tin foil on it to try to get better reception. Okay, how many remember those days? Let me see your hand. Okay, now watch this, watch this. How many of you- I'm old people in no, the room. No, watch this. No, you, you, you can't give it, no, honey, you can't give it. Okay, now watch this. How many of you have no idea what we're talking about with bunny rabbit ears for your TV set? Look at these guys, look at them, you know? And in fact, I was telling my mom, mom in the, in the first service, so I got a t color TV for Christmas because I worked for my mom and dad and they remember that when you gave me a color TV and it was the World Series and it had one of those little antenna things and I couldn't get a reception so I tried the foil and everything and the only way that it worked where I could watch the World Series is the TV set was here I had to hold on to it and kind of bend it you and look like this the I became the antenna I didn't realize I had the power of God then when I was like 11 years old there you Brenda do you think now, now, here's the there thing. There's right. a lot of people in here that remember the rabbit ear days. But you know there's people in here that do not know what life was like when there was no internet. Okay, let's see a show of hands. How many, How many of you, you, you do you, not you, know what it's like? Look at this. Your yeah. life, yeah, right. You lived life That's always true. with internet. The internet one time did not exist. It's only like a couple decades old, really. It, it, so if you wanted to look something up, you had to have this guy come to your house and sell you the Britannica Encyclopedias. You remember yes, that? Yes. <laughs> That's how you got information. We're dating ourselves. I'm gonna actually take you out on one, Brenda. Okay, That's how much we're gonna date. Better. All right. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to do this. I would like to date her and also welcome you uh, this day. But anyway, how many of you that are watching, you're like, life before internet? Bunny rabbit ears, but anyway, that's all uh, just in fun. But I do have a message. I'm going to talk about the goodness of God. And I'm really feeling very strong in my heart that we have got to come into an understanding just how much God is countering the stuff that's happening in the earth. We are coming out of this harsh season and we are coming into uh, freedom, but we're also coming into restoration and a divine so reset. So and so I can't wait to share with you about the things that the Lord has put on my heart, especially about the goodness of God, Brenda. And it's exciting. Can I just say this? I don't want to belabor, but think about how much harshness we've already overcome. If you just take a look at where we were That's a couple true. years back, I mean, yeah. God has been, how many of you would agree, good. God has been faithful. How many of you, God's been God good? Yes, been amazing. Amen, amen, amen. 
All right. Well, are you excited to worship God today? Yeah. Are you ready to give him your best praise? Come on. It's a brand new year. This is a year to be excited. Amen. It's a year to have faith. It's a year of expectation. So come on. If you're ready, you throw those hands up, wave them a little bit, and say, Lord, I'm ready. Lord, I'm ready. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. To be alive. To be alive. To be on your team. To be on your team. And Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, know I know you're in this room. You're in this and room. And so some Something supernatural is about to happen. Come on, if you're excited, shout like you really believe it. And let's praise the Lord. You know, as I was standing over there just kind of waiting for direction, I felt like the Holy Spirit whispered something to me, and it's this. Some of you in this room and some of you that are watching, you don't like the direction that this year has already started off. I mean, we're how many days into it? What is today? The eight days. Well, eight is the number of, well, it's actually the number of resurrection, but it's also the number of new beginnings. And if you read in your Bible, when Jesus rose from the dead, there is obviously is the third day, so on, but it was eight days. It says on the eighth day, Mary went, obviously it was evening or early morning, still kind of dark. But it was very significant because it noted, you know, how many days that it was. So how many are ready for something new to be resurrected, something new to begin to happen? But then eight is also the number of new beginnings because it's, it's like a two full circles. You know, it's kind of like a cycle. And I was standing there and I heard the Lord say, some people don't like the direction, Hank, that the year has started off. And, you know, you've got 300 and um, what is it? I don't know how many... Help me out, math people. You have 365 days in a year, but you've already exhausted eight. So, math people, how many days do we have left? In the great, huh? Help me out. I'm up. 357. I was testing you to see if you knew. Actually, I couldn't think of it at the time. Honestly, I didn't. I mean, I, I did great in math. You know, I passed uh, multiplication and such. But I couldn't, I just for whatever, whatever reason, I, I couldn't figure it out. So thanks for your help. But here's the point. Here's the point. Those of you that are watching, you know, you're, you're, you're caught up in this. You don't like the direction. Well, listen, you've got 357 uh, more days of this year. And there was a point where Israel was marching around. And they were 40 years in the wilderness. And God had to shift not only their thinking. He tried many times for 40 years, but they couldn't, they couldn't keep their mouth right. And so part of coming and finishing out the year strong is we've got to align our words with the word of God and with what God has said. But watch this. God says to them in Deuteronomy, he says, listen, you've gone around this mountain long enough. He said, change your direction. And he tells them where to look. He says, change your direction and look northward. Go northward. Why didn't God say go south, go east, go west? Well, they had already been kind of going in a circle here. Because north is a prophetic sign or a prophetic picture of where heaven is, where God is the one that is seated on the throne. And sometimes you literally, when you feel like your life is just going around in circles and chaos, and it just seems like the same old, same old. Listen, don't put your mouth in agreement with them. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Now, for us in this room, north is this way. Now, those of you that are watching, I'm not sure what direction north is. Um, if you don't know, look up. That, that'll kind of help. You know, just at least look up. If you don't know which direction, um, you know, north is if you're in your house. I get it. Sometimes I don't know the directions when I'm in a certain place or whatever. So you can look up, but if you're in here and you really feel like, you know what, God, I, I need some things to start shifting in a new direction. I'm going to break the cycle and the pattern of things. I'm going to line my mouth, but I'm going to line my physical feet as a prophetic act that I am looking to God to change the direction of how this new year has already started off and how the, the 2022 is finished. So if that's you, face north. All right, just face north. For us, it's this way. Those of you that are watching, you can look up if you don't know where north is in your home or if you physically can, turn to the north. And let's agree together that every satanic pattern, uh, hindering spirit, 
You know, sometimes the enemy tries to, to do things to us. So, Father, we are standing in a moment right now that we are asking for a divine interruption of your mighty hand against any plot, plan, strategy, schemes, assignments of the enemy that has tried to cause our year to look like former years or to carry the harshness of the season that we've been in with us in this current moment. So Lord, we choose now to set our face to the north, to the place of looking to you for our help. We physically choose to turn and change direction and break any demonic patterns or even habitual patterns that we have set. And we choose to realign our mouth Realign our steps towards goodness and mercy follows us. And Lord, we set our eyes, our attention, our perspective upon you. And we are asking you to cause this year to be a year of goodness. Every day, goodness and mercy shall overtake us, surround us, protect us. Every day, goodness and mercy shall track us down. And we pray for a new path, a set forth by your hand and by your spirit upon us that it's a path of truth it's a path of health and wholeness healing long life great grace mercy strength blessing prosperity protection and god shalom peace 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 and we thank you for it this is a good year say this is a good year this is a great year and i've changed the direction of my body, my mindset, my words, and my faith. And I release my faith for a great year, a new path, many breakthroughs and blessings I receive now in Jesus' name. Amen. There you go. I just felt like we just needed to reset it. Amen. How many of you ever had it where you get, a, you get a power interruption in your home and sometimes you got to go reset, you know? Or how many of you have uh, Wi-Fi? And you have the, the particular company where they have the best Wi-Fi, but it doesn't work. <laughs> Raise your hand if that's... <laughs> that's probably everybody in here. You know, sometimes, you know, I'll be watching football or something. I'll be like, oh, man. You know, the, or I'm working, uh, you know, on a project and I can't get a good signal. You ever had that? So you have to go down and reset the, what do they call that thing, a router? R router. You go down and you reset it and then it kind of jump starts everything again. I really believe that some of you, you just reset your year to, to just begin to be aligned correctly with what God wants to bless you with. Amen. All right. Well, listen, I want you to do me a favor. How many you know that God is the Lion of Judah? Jesus is. But he's also the shepherd who leads us into green pasture. So we don't want the Lord to focus tonight on the lions. We want him to focus on green pastures called Green Bay Packers. So I want you to greet one another and say, I am saying, go pack, go. We are asking God to do something he's never done before. Amen. And greet one another. Well, you don't have to do that, but just greet one another. Tell them you're so glad that they're here. Amen. Comes. Amen. Well, God bless you as you give. And Brenda, you're a fox. So, anyway. Well, she is. <laughs> I won't embarrass her too bad or she'll tell me about it. So, I was. <laughs> hey, uh, listen, I want to show you. So, how many of you thought that was, you know, I don't want to belabor too long today because I'm going to preach to you and then we're going to sup. Did you get that? sup, you know, eat. They were going to maybe nap, but then there's a huge game on tonight. But anyway, so look at that picture there. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And if you think about the steel that's going to go up, you know, for the new sanctuary, man, it's going to be probably as tall, if not taller than that. But uh, something was really happening 
more than that. And I want you to see that what we captured that was really going on. Put the next slide up, please. Look at that. <laughs> Dr. Zorb came in. Look at that. This was my, my illustrator, Norris, that illustrates uh, the Captain Zepto. He sent this to me. And Norris, if you're watching, this was hilarious. I laughed so hard. And I, I texted him. I said, Norris, can I use it tomorrow? This is so amazing. Isn't that creative? And of course, you got Orbitron down there calling in for, you know, but look at the size of the people. He made it look like a spider, but it kind of does if you think about it. Maybe we should do a comic book. Isn't that funny? So I just thought you might really enjoy that. So, but uh, talking of, yeah, all right, thank you. And talking about Captain Zepto, I want to speak to those of you that are watching around the world. Listen, I asked you last week to go out to Amazon and those of you in here and and even though you've bought Captain Zepto and Mutz Van Milo, uh, to go and kindly, you know, keep, you know, purchasing them through hankandbrenda.org, through our ministry, because I want to be able to keep the revenue, keep it flowing, keep it going. I just signed with the uh, animator to do five more uh, videos, and he's almost done with this one, so we're just about done. And he said, we're going slow because this is the, this is the pilot program. Yeah. And so uh, if you go to hankandbrenda.org, we can keep doing that. But you can go out to Amazon and put a five-star review. And so I want you to see, this is the, the latest one. That's Captain Zepto. Uh, that's, I think, the fourth comic book that we've done. And uh, the special inflated, it, it's really funny. Uh, everybody inflates, and, uh, except Captain Zepto. So, and uh, then I have a new story that I'm working on. Norris is illustrating now. Uh, it's called The Great Z Eclipse, and it's kind of Hank Kuhneman's version of a non-smutty uh, Samson and Delilah story. And uh, it's about Granny Z wants to know with Dr. Zorb uh, the secret of his success. So it's hair hilarious. It really is. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. And then, so make sure you go out there and, uh, you know, but that will be coming out uh, for the conference. And then Mutsvi and Milo, that's the other series that we have. I decided to hold off to my th with my third series, P.I. Gus. I just felt like we need to kind of get Zepto out there a little bit more, especially with the videos coming, and then maybe we'll release that in 24. But this is Treehouse SSO. They get stuck in a treehouse, and, of course, Mutsby's out there. He is painting, and he, he is absolutely calling for help. See how he's painting there? SSO. So, and that only had 10 uh, reviews on it, but now it's up to 15, so let's just put that baby over the top, all right? Will you do that for me? And uh, I really, really appreciate that. That will be such a blessing, and let's get into the Word of God. I want you to open your Bible to Psalm 65. We're talking about the year of God's goodness, and this is very important that we understand this. You know, when God declares something, we need to align ourselves with it. You know, there's people that sometimes you say something like that, like, well, I don't believe that. Well, you know, that's your choice not to believe it, but you put yourself in a very bad situation if God is in fact speaking something and uh, we don't come into agreement. So, you know, we always want to make sure that we come into agreement with what God is saying. And it doesn't matter, you know, God's not up there falling off his throne with all the crazy weird stuff that have gone on in the earth. You know, that doesn't bother the Lord. It really doesn't. You know, God's a God of faith. He's a God that doesn't lose his joy like some of us. You know, we're so quick about losing our joy. You know, we get all worked up about things, but that's not the nature of God. And so uh, I want you to look at the scripture, our text here. It's Psalm 65, and I want you to look at verse 11, those of you that are watching. So we're going to look at, at it in two different versions to kind of understand really what uh, we need to connect our faith with this year. So it says, you crown... Or crown us the year with goodness. Now stop right there. Underline the word crown us. Now nobody uses the word crown us or crown. But that word literally means. And you can look another uh, word up. Psalm 5 if you're taking notes. Verse 12 where God surrounds us um, with a shield of favor. It's the same word for crown. So you could say it this way. You God, you surround this year. Here's another uh, definition of that word crown. You protect or you preserve this year with goodness. So how many believe that your year is going to be protected and your year is going to be preserved? No matter what happens on the outside, there is a preservation, a protection that is upon you. 
Amen? MC Hammer sung about it. You can't touch this. Yeah. That's, that's preservation, man, isn't it? All right, so you crown, you preserve, you protect this year with goodness. Notice the next part. And you, thy paths, drop fatness. So not only that, come on, today's the first day of the fast. We're, we're, we're going to drop fatness. It's going to be a powerful year. So not only is it going to surround us with this goodness, but part of that goodness is watch the fat drop off. You don't even have to buy those stuff on TV, right? <laughs> that they promise you, you know, four to six weeks. What is it? I don't think it's even four to six weeks. You ever seen those uh, uh, things, you know, I, I go out and, and read about Nebraska football and they got these ads that rotate. And there was one, you can lose your goal weight within a week. I'm like, yeah, right. Sure. What are you going to do, man? You know what I mean? I don't even want to click it on. And they get you to try to click bait is what they call it. And you click it on and, you know, and it's got, that's right. If you will do this for five days, you will have all of these results. And then they, you know, got these people, yep, this is me, you know, five days ago. And then they got, right? You ever seen that? And you got to watch like an hour worth of video before you finally get to what in the world are they offering. And if you're crazy enough to wait for the hour-long presentation, you find out it's bacon soda and apple cider vinegar or something, you know. <laughs> it's like, some, you know, it's like, I'm ah, wasting an hour, man. But, but in the year of goodness, you're going you're gonna to see protection, preservation, and thy paths will drop fatness. Let's look at another uh, tra uh, translation of this verse, kind of help us to better understand it. You surround us, you protect us, you preserve this year. Watch this, with a bountiful harvest. How many are ready for a bountiful harvest? Now, you can't have a harvest unless there be some seeds. So I believe that you have been doing enough good things that is going to bring a bountiful harvest in return in your life. How about that? Y'all aren't excited. Okay. You all just want to go sup. That's what it is. So you crown this year with bountiful harvest. Now watch this. And I like how it mentions this. Even the hard pathways. Watch this. The paths, the steps, maybe the journey you've been on. Watch this. Shall overflow with what? Abundance. God is saying because of the harsh season that we have been in and has been upon us, God himself is going to make sure that we are lavish with goodness. I'm telling you, this is so profound. Now, something happened last, um, was it Sunday night that uh, DeMar, or was it Monday night? Monday night. So Monday night, you know, I was... Uh, with Brenda and I was, she was cooking dinner and I was watching Monday Night Football and all of a sudden, you know, the Bills were playing the Bengals and I was watching and all of a sudden I saw DeMar Hamlin uh, take a nasty hit. How many of you saw it? And he, he collapsed and as soon as he collapsed, I jumped out of my chair and I said, no, you're not going to die. I don't know why, it just came out of my spirit. I'm not the only one, that's not the point. We all got a hold of God on behalf of DeMar. Thank you, God. And I said, no, you're not going to die. And Brenda immediately stopped cooking. She yelled. She said, hey, come on, prophesy to the, to the, to the TV. And I started prophesying, and, and, and it was coming out of my mouth. And, and I could hear the Spirit of God on my words. And I said, this is about revival. This is about breath. This is about an awakening. And you, Damar, shall awaken as a sign to the earth. And... And so some people are only looking at harsh things. They're only looking at bad things. And what they don't realize, God just gave us a powerful sign. You say, well, how is that? Listen, back in 2019, we're going to talk about this at Prophetic Pulse in a few weeks. And Anthony, thank you for always helping. Uh, there's a prophecy from 2019. And how many of you will remember this when I say this? Don't raise your hand until you hear me say it. Will you remember when the Spirit of God says, one, one, shall collapse before the cameras. Do you remember that prophecy? And then it went on and says, and when you see this, it will be a sign that the things that they have lied to us about, and some have cooperated and have been like a puppet. God says, when you see this one collapse, it shall be a sign that this too shall collapse. I believe with all my heart. Then, I was watching football last night. Uh, I always watch football if I can. 
It's almost over, and it's going to be back to home and garden for about eight months. But anyway, Brenda, all right, stop it, Brenda. Stop, stop, stop. I can already feel it. So how many of you men would grunt? You feel it? Come on, grunt, man. How many of you ladies would woo or whatever you do? I don't know how you can make it. Yeah, there you go, you know. So I was watching football last night, and I noticed something very powerful. All of the players, the Jaguars and the Titans, got together in a circle. And they began to pray. Come on, when have you seen that? No, can I remind you? Two years ago, they were kneeling, protesting our Constitution and our flag. And they were trying to play the race card and trying to make it seem like, you know, whites were against blacks, blacks were against whites, everybody was against everybody, nobody liked anybody, right? And I'm watching them. It didn't matter what color or skin you were. They were kneeling down, hugging necks, and crying out and thanking God. And you know what? There was a prophecy from 2017 said, they kneel and protest today. But God says, watch what will happen. They will gather the same people. They will gather and kneel and pray before me. How many remember that prophecy from 2017? Now, why am I saying this? Because some people cannot see that we are coming into goodness. We are what our scripture has been for this year. Deuteronomy 6.23. God is bringing us out. Come on, somebody. To bring us in. In. Into what? Into his goodness. Into his blessing. And if you go back to what happened with DeMar. We have been talking about revival. When he collapsed. He lost his heartbeat. And thank God they revived him. 33 million people around the world. Watch a man be revived. But it's not just a man being revived. It's the earth being revived by the goodness of God in a divine reset. What have we been contending for? The last two, three years, our breath, whether it be censorship, free speech, but God forbid the COVID and the masks. They restored not only his heartbeat, which I believe is going to happen again to this country and to the earth, but restored his breath, restored his life. And now yesterday he was up talking And writing and speaking, he was awakened. I believe it is a sign. And it's a sign of the goodness of God that is coming and absolutely manifesting like we've never seen before. Now, here's the thing. Some people have a hard time with what I'm saying. Because there are four different viewpoints that are kind of circulating out there that I've had some serious discussions with God. Can I tell you the one, number one, one? Not necessarily in this order, but here's one. They don't, people, some people don't believe that God is really going to do anything more. That he's taken his hand off of America, he's taken his hand off of the earth, and we are in the times of the tribulation, we're in the times of the end times, where everything's going to be, you know, Gog, Magog, Eggnog, the Beast, you know, the Mark, the Luke and the John, and it's good, that was, that was kind of, never mind. But, it, but you understand, people, they talk this end time. And I listen to some of these preachers, and I listen to people, it's like when they don't know what else to think, they start pulling all of current events and start searching to try to make it fit. But how many of you have been serving God like me for almost, let's see, since 1984? I've been serving God, how many years would that be? 38 years, and I have seen Countless times the same things of trying to look at current events and pull out end time eschatology scriptures. I remember 84, man, he was supposed to come. I remember that it was 88 reasons. I mean, somebody had it down to 88 reasons. How many remember the 88 reasons? And I remember going to church that night that he was supposed to come because there was 88 reasons that verified the Lord was going to come. And there was a lady in the church, and if you're here watching, just here, you know, maybe you changed. But there was the same old lady that whenever it would get quiet in the church, she would always be the one, and she'd come out with the tongue, right? And because she was the most spiritual one in the church, everybody would just wait. 
And she always interpreted her own tongue. That's even more interesting. Come on, man. If you've got a real word from God, give somebody else a chance to have the interpretation. And all of a sudden, the tongue was, I am coming, says the Lord. I'm like, oh, no. I mean, I had just gotten saved. I'm like, you know, no, actually, I was four years old because it was 88. Yeah, 88 reasons. So it was 1988. So I would have been four years old. I was, I was still so, I was so young. I was such a little guy. I was so, you know, I was, it was fantastic. But I was, I was young. And, and she says, I am coming, says the Lord. I'm like, oh, no, I'm never going to get married. That's what I thought, Brenda. That's what I thought. I hadn't met you yet. But I'm like, okay, I'll never get married. And then it says, your eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard, your heart has not even conceived what I have for you. I'm like, and the pastor gets up and he goes, oh, come, Lord, yes, you're coming. I was scared, man. I'm getting in my car and I'm like, you know, I'm holding on to the wheel, just making sure you know that, you know, if anybody's going to go, you know, and all of a sudden cars start crashing, I, I got to make sure that I'm going with them. <laughs> How many remember that? So you have the viewpoint of everything is end time. Do you know since Peter stood up 2,023 years ago in Acts 2 verse 16 and said, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in the last days, saith the Lord, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, your sons and daughters will prophesy, etc. Well, we've been in the last days. Now some people say, well, we're in the last of the last days. Well, wait a minute. Something that they're not preaching they go to Matthew 24, they go to Luke 17, and it records, and you can read this. The disciples ask a question in Matthew 24, verse 3, says, Lord, come on, tell us when you are going to wrap all of this up. And so Jesus begins to tell him, he says, listen, this is what you're going to see. Nation's going to rise against nation, right? Kingdom against kingdom. There's going to be earthquakes in various places. There's going to be wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not afraid, or right? Trouble. He, trouble. Because the end is not yet. Then he goes on and says, man, many are going to be offended, right? The love of many will wax cold. Lawlessness will increase. And he keeps going down the list. But he says, but this is the beginning of some pain that you're going to experience in your generation. And it's the beginning of birth pains. And he didn't tell us how long that was going to last. But what they don't preach to you is Matthew 24, verse 14, in the context of what I'm saying to you about God's goodness. You see, yeah, there are wars and rumors of wars. Yes, there are things that are playing out before our sight. But why... Do they not understand that something has to be injected and, and preached, declared, understood in the earth before, God come, before Jesus comes? Look at what he says. Jesus still speaking. The prior scriptures is what I just described to you. When Jesus said, I'm not coming yet. These are just signs. These are but birth pains. The end is not yet. But notice what he tells you will be the greatest sign that he is coming. And this gospel, how many you know the gospel is the good news? So you can say the good news, the, the, the gospel of me being a God of goodness shall be preached, shall be proclaimed, shall be heralded, shall be understood, shall be declared from Lord of Hosts Church and other places. It will be preached in the whole world for what? A witness. In other words, you have to be able to testify and witness to the fact that even though there's wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in various places, that you are seeing in the earth, in your life, in your year, the goodness of God. Amen. This must happen and it will happen. Why? Because then Jesus goes on and says, when this happens, this incredible decreeing, proclaiming, celebrating, understanding my goodness, then shall the end come. So if you're going to have an end time eschatology, make sure you don't void out the goodness of God. Because always remember, as long as the Holy Spirit is in the earth, even the Bible speaks that the Holy Spirit is the one that restrains the Antichrist. Isn't that right? So as long as the Spirit's here, you can always count on something that God injected in the earth through a covenant sealed by blood. Yeah. It's called goodness. God himself. Jesus. Yeah. Here's a second view that people have. So one is, you know, let's just get out of here. You know, Lord, send your rapture bus. Let's just get out of here. There's no triumphant church. 
The second viewpoint that people have is, well, Pastor Hank, okay, well, maybe he's not coming, but don't you know that these are days of darkness? These are the days of doom and gloom. Right? Have you heard people say that? Well, let's go to the scripture because that's partly true. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, notice what God did. God did. In Genesis 1, verse 14, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens. Notice who created the division. To divide the day from the night. So who created the division? God did. So God's the one that has his hand in separating. Look at Exodus chapter 8, verse 22. Let's go there, and then we're going to look at verse 23 of that verse. All right, Exodus 8, verse 22. And I will sever. Now, the word sever means to separate or to divide. So, you, you know, one translation says, I will put a difference or I will separate. In that day, how many know that day, but also this day, the land of Goshen, that's where Israel lived, God's people, in which my people dwell that no swarm of flies. Come on, how many know the devil is the Lord of the flies? So none of his demons and all of his stuff that he's going to try to swarm around your life can touch you because you're in a no-fly zone. Come on, say it. This year, I'm crowned. I'm protected. I'm preserved in the year of goodness. I'm in a no-fly zone. Amen. So God says, I'm going to put a difference. I'm going to make a separation. And I am the one. That shall watch this, that you may know that I'm the Lord in the midst of the earth. Now, I never saw this until I was sitting down there uh, during worship, just looking up the scripture because it was coming to my heart. Notice verse 23. What year are we in? 23. So I think we could say this. God says in 2023, I, God, will put a division between my people and the people of this earth. And tomorrow shall this sign be. In other words, you better hang on, man. So you got the eschatology, let's get out of here. And then you got the doom and gloom people, and they don't realize that there's a, there's a separation that God is bringing. Look at uh, Isaiah chapter 60. So Isaiah chapter 60 further reveals this separation. And the problem is, you know, it's like the disciples in the boat in Mark chapter 6 uh, where they went out, Jesus told them, get in the boat, and they get out. They're actually two to three miles in the middle of the lake, and a storm comes. Jesus is walking out on the lake in front of them, and it's dark, and the winds are contrary against them, and all they could see was Jesus walking, but they didn't know it was Jesus, and the first thing they yell out is, oh, no, it's something evil. It is a ghost. Man, talk about insulting God, calling him evil let alone calling him a cow when they worship the golden calf. So that's where some people are at today. Either they're, hey, get me out of here, scape mentality, or hey, you know what? It's all about evil. They can't see a visitation of God. They can't see Jesus in, in, uh, interjecting goodness because all they're looking for is something bad. That's what the disciples were. They're in darkness. Everything seems contrary against them. Why expect anything good? And here it is, Jesus himself. The good God himself. But some people, all they can see is darkness. Arise, shine, for the light has come. And watch this. The glory, the presence of God himself is risen upon thee. Now watch this. So you've got light happening. You've got the presence of God happening. And something is going on at the same time. For look, darkness will, yeah, cover the earth where you've been. We know that. And gross darkness, that word gross darkness in Hebrew is mental oppression. How many people that you've heard or know that are having issues mentally, you know, they're in fear, they're in anxiety, they're in depression, they're having, you know, all kinds of oppression and mental fatigue. Well, that's part of the sign of this day. But we, we forget about the verse ahead of it. Wait a minute, arise. Shine. Don't just look at the darkness that's covering the earth. Don't just look at gross darkness and mental oppression. But the Lord, watch, here's your answer. But the Lord shall arise upon thee. God is the one that even though it's dark is going to rise up. And watch this. His presence is going to be stronger. And his glory is going to be seen on you. Verse 3, watch this. And Gentiles, the world is going to come to the light. Come on, not the light caving into the darkness. And kings, governments are going to come to the brightness of the rising of the church in the glory of Almighty God. 
Now let's go to Joel chapter 2, verse 2, because people will quote this when they want to talk about doom and gloom. And so they'll, they'll quote this, but they don't realize that they're only quoting half of the verse. Okay, because there's a divine separation going on. In the year of goodness, there may be darkness. There may be gross darkness, mental oppression, but arise. Come on, get your courage up. Get your faith up. Come on, begin to look for Jesus not coming as an evil spirit or to do evil, but Jesus is coming in a mighty visitation of his presence and his glory. He is the light that will overcome this darkness. He's the good that will overcome this evil. Amen. So notice what they do. They quote this. It's a day of darkness, and it's a day of gloominess. Now watch, okay? We don't, we don't argue that it's, you know, not dark. We don't argue that there's gloominess out there. If that's what you want to sit down in front of your TV set and let it entertain you and speak to you and lie to you and corrupt your soul and weigh down your mind and get you in fear and scare the Hades out of you. I mean, if that's what you want to do and that's how you want to live, hey, you will partake of the spirit of doom and gloom and darkness. But notice there is a comma. There is a pause after gloominess. Some of you all need to pause. Because if you keep reading, it says clouds and thick darkness. Now, some people say, but see, that's what I'm talking about, Pastor Hank. It's a day of darkness and gloominess. And none of that, oh, the clouds, there's such a cloud. And there is such thick darkness. But what you have to understand is those are, are, are words that are separate. Doom and gloom, clouds and thick darkness. And the reason that comes there is to try to show you there's a separation. Here's why. Those are the same clouds and thick darkness, the same Hebrew words in Exodus 19, Exodus 20, Exodus 21. You can also find it in Deuteronomy. When God came down and visited with Israel, and Moses, the Bible said, went into, watch this, I think it's Deuteronomy, oh, God, I wish I could remember. Is it Deuteronomy 4, 7, somewhere it's in Deuteronomy. It says that, and it also says that in Exodus, that Moses went, watch this, into the thick, dark cloud where God was. And it's the same Hebrew words. It's speaking not of darkness and gloom. It's speaking of God's presence, God's glory coming at the same time. How many of you see that? So that's the second one. You've got people that, let's look for the rapture bus. Everything is doom and gloom. And I say to you, why? When it's a time of God's visitation, it's time for his goodness. And then the end of the world will come. All right, that's the second one. Now, the third one is people are saying, in fact, I was on Flashpoint on Tuesday and Thursday. And one of those days, there was some comments and Pastor Gene, I love you, but man, I just, you know, the way the show kind of went, I didn't get a chance. And I'm sitting here going, come on, man, I want to speak to this. And so uh, there was one comment. I'm not here to put anybody on blast. They said it out of their mouth, so there you go. And if they didn't want it said, they shouldn't have said it. But here's the thing. I will say it because I felt like there was something that we needed to consider as the people of God and as the Flashpoint Army. And that is this. They say, well, don't get your hopes up. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm not just getting my hopes up just to get my hopes up. And if I do have my hopes up, I have to mix it with something. Look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is. When is it? Tomorrow? No, right now. I don't care the doom and gloom. I don't care how dark it is. I'm not trying to get your hopes up. I'm trying to keep you in faith. Because if you're going to have any kind of hope, you've got to mix it with your faith, your expectation of what you know God has said in his word, what he has prophesied. Come on, what you've prayed, what you're believing for. Now faith, watch this, is the very substance of the very things that I'm hoping for. I don't just have my hopes up, I have my faith up. And I'm mixing with my hope faith. Amen? So I'm not delusional. Praise God. So how many know, get your hopes up and mix it with your faith? Because listen, if we don't mix the Word of God with our faith, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that the Word of God, if you don't mix it with faith, it won't profit. If God has prophesied that He's going to make this nation great again or whatever it is that we want, then we have to connect those words what God has said prophetically. Come on, he's given us so many signs. That we have to connect it with our faith. 
Amen? So as you, as you hope for the future, as you hope for this year of goodness, come on, don't just, you know, talk negative and talk bad and put your head down and, and agree with, you know, all the stuff that's going on in the world. Instead, say, no, I lift up my faith. And I say this is going to be a year of goodness because, God, that's what you said. And I choose to come into agreement with that. And watch what God does. It's amazing. All right, now, here's the fourth one. The fourth one that people say is, well, I'm a realist. Have you heard that? I'm a realist. In other words, it's not going to get better. It's bad. It's going to continue to go down. Okay? None of the prophecies are really going to come to pass. None of the things, okay, this, this nation's in trouble. We're going to go down the two. We're realists. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're a realist, huh? You sound more like an alarmist. Let me remind you of a story. There was a story that you find in Numbers 13 of your Bible that had 12 spies that were commissioned by God to go in to a land, watch this prophetic word, flowing with milk and honey. And it was a land that was supposed to make Israel great again. And they were to go in and spy out the land And 12 of them went in, and 10 realists came back and said, Oh, my gosh, i got to tell you what's really happening. i got to tell you what's really playing on the news. i got to tell you what's really on the Canaanite uh, Chronicles. There are some big dudes in there. You know, they didn't see me, so they couldn't make the comparison to giants or me to my man over there, you know. But they said, Man, there's giants there. And we're like grasshoppers. This is really the perspective. And all the people grabbed a hold of them being realists and alarmists, and they talked the whole nation out from what God said. It may be that there's giant problems. It may be that there's things that are huge to overcome in our nation, our country. Come on. Our government. But I'm not going to come into agreement with that's the way that it is always going to be. Because God has said different. And he's proven many signs to verify it. Too many that we just watch prophetic perspective. You'll see the prophecies. But look at Numbers chapter 14. You you have to see where this is is so interesting to me. Uh, Actually, no, I'm sorry, not Numbers uh, 14. Joshua 14, verse 8. Joshua 14, verse 8. Joshua 14, verse 8. So now watch this. So now Caleb, 40 years into the future. It shouldn't have taken him 40 years later to get his promise. But because of 10 realists, it made the prophecies prolonged for decades. Nevertheless, this is Caleb, my brethren, the 10 realists, went up with me and made the heart of the people melt. In other words, some translations got him in fear, got him in unbelief, made them afraid. One translation says reported the facts. Reported the facts. But he said, I wholeheartedly followed the Lord my God. In other words, I didn't deny the facts. I just refused to accept the facts as the final outcome. I'm not putting my head in the sand and not being a realist. Yes, I recognize our country is is facing some very serious things, especially preachers who are cowards. Listen, we had people come in here and, and, and they say, well, you know, we don't like the direction of this church because it's going so political. Let me ask you a question. Do you love your freedom? Yes. You better thank God for a preacher that is willing to stand up and talk politics. Because where are you going to get it? Where are you going to get it, honey? You're not going to get it from the news. You're not going to get it from the newspapers. You're not going to get it from the preachers. So where are you going to get the truth? And you don't understand the way that God delivered this nation. It was, listen to me, 
People say, well, America needs to repent. Well, that's great, that's true, and I'll never discourage repentance, but I think there's more than that statement alone. What about us that are repenting? What about us that are in the face of God? Listen, the Revolutionary War, listen to me, the Revolutionary War lasted, there's many different theories, but it lasted, majority agree, eight, month, eight years and four months. And there was three million people that were uh, counted in the, cons- uh, the, the census that year. Three million that were, that were living at that time in America. Eight years and four months of the revolution. And guess who was involved causing the revolution? They even have a statue today in the White House called the Black Robe Regiment. It was yes. a pastor. Yes. who stood up, he was the first concealed carriers, and the preachers began to wear black robes and conceal underneath their robes. Amen. And they would empower their congregation. They were involved politically, honey. And if they wouldn't have involved their congregations to get involved politically, they would have lost the revolution. And the revolution was fought by less than 6% of the population. It wasn't the masses. Here's the last thing I'll say on that. Well, we just don't want to go to a church. We have to hear politics. Listen, I, I heard one preacher say, well, you're never going to hear political things from this pulpit. And I wanted to say to that preacher, I know that preacher. He's a very well-known preacher. And I wanted to call him up. I had his number. And, and God kept stopping me. And, and, I, and I, I was going to ream them out and say, well, when they steal your pulpit, You're going to sure as Hades wish that you would have said something a lot more bolder. So we better speak up or you won't have the freedom that you have. That our precious soldiers and warriors, our great veterans fought for. So where was I? Okay, so uh, you have the the realist. Look Look here. Nevertheless, my brethren... Okay, again, Josh or Caleb, he's just saying, look, I'm not denying the real facts, man. There were giants there. He even said it. But he said, man, they're bread for us. In other words, I know there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on in our nation. Censorship. Come on, scamdemics, mandates, uh, voting irregularities, right? Fighting, political craziness. To be honest with you, I hate politics. I would would never want to run for politics. It is so stinking dirty. But that's why we got to fight for it. So we get some good, clean people in there. Right? But the point is, he followed wholeheartedly after God. And that's what we have to do too. Amen? Now watch this. Go to um, uh, Numbers 14, verses 36 and 37. I believe that's the right one. Please let it be the right one. Okay. Oh, it is. I was hoping it wasn't going to be. And worms are going to come out of people's ears. And, okay. And the men which Moses sent. This is how serious this is. The men which Moses sent to search the land returned and made all the congregation murmur against him by bringing up slander upon the land. And watch what happened to them. We just went through a plague. We went through a scamdemic. I am not about to cause people's hearts to be in fear. Because look at what happened to these ten realists. And these men that did bring up an evil report upon the land, God called it an evil report, died by a plague. And the Lord told me when all this stuff started happening, he said, Hank, stick to the story. Stick to what I've been prophesying through you and what I've said for years. Don't change it unless I tell you. Because the, the scamdemic that we went through is going to release the new era of the new faces, new leaders, I'm talking preachers, I'm talking government officials, I'm talking about judges, I'm even talking about uh, the media. You're going to see some new faces. And the plague is what's going to separate the new from the old. By what they chose to say and how they stood during this whole time. That's why don't get your mouth speaking wrong. All right, let's go on. Let's change the subject. Well, it's still the same subject. 
go to Nahum chapter 1, because if you're going to understand that God is good, you've got to understand, yeah, we're in the end times, but you know what? There has to be a proclamation and a manifestation of his goodness, Matthew 24, 14. Number two, yes, there are days of doom and gloom. However, according to Isaiah 60 and Joel chapter 2, verse 2, God has not left us without hope in a day of darkness and gloom. He said that, uh, arise, shine. The light has come. Glory's here. Joel 2 verse 2 says there's going to be clouds and thick darkness. His presence is not going to leave us without hope. Number three, don't uh, believe the lie that you can't get your hopes up. Well, don't get it up without faith. Yeah. Keep your faith up. That's how Joshua and Caleb, who had a different spirit, were going to take the prophecy of the promised land and, 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 over, and overtake the giants. Number four, don't become such a realist. Don't deny the facts. That's not the point. The point is realize that God has a plan to overcome. And that's what you got to put your fight and your attention behind. So the other thing that we need if we're going to come into the year of goodness is the understanding of who God is. Who is God? Jesus asked the question to his disciples. Watch this. In Matthew 16, he pulled his disciples aside and he, and he said this. He said, who, who, who are men saying that I am? Tell me, what are people saying that I, that I am? And you know, it's amazing how many of the disciples all spoke up and said, some, they said, well, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're this. And they could give Jesus a whole list of what people were saying. And only one man for himself knew who this Jesus was. And Peter finally, because Jesus changes the question, he says, all right, boys, I want to know on a personal level, who am I? Not about what you heard preached. Not about what you read. Who am I? And Peter speaks up and he says, Jesus, you are the son. You are the Christ. You're the son of the living God. And Jesus immediately turned around and said, man, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood, what they're saying out on the street hasn't revealed this to you, but my father. When David and his mighty men in 1 Samuel chapter 30 were coming into, back into their hometown Ziglag, and they could see the fire and smell the smoke, and there was, uh, uh, the, the, I believe it was the Midianites that took out, or maybe it was the Amalekites, whichever it was, parasite, it took out... <laughs> Zigleg, where David lived, burned it with fire. They took all of the men's wives, took their children, took their animals, and literally burned the city to the ground. And the men were so upset, the Bible says that they began to weep. till They didn't have any more power to weep. And at one point, they wanted to blame their leader, and they were going to kill David, and they were going to stone him. But look at 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. David did something that is so important. If you were going to align your faith and your hopes, come on, with it being a year of goodness, you have got to understand who is God in your life. Come on, who is God? Not by your experience, not by someone else's experience, but you've got to have a revelation, a real understanding. Yeah, that your experience have revealed to you, but you, you can't base it off of my faith, my revelation. So when it really came down to it, David was greatly distressed. The people thought of stoning him, but notice the last part of this verse. It said, but David encouraged himself in, watch this, the Lord, his God. He had a revelation so that when he got discouraged, when he got afraid, when he felt like giving up, he pulled on his inner self that finally said, you know what? I have a revelation. Even though I'm looking at real things here, God, you are a good God. Amen. That's why he said in Psalm 27, verse 13, David said, I would have given up. I would have despaired unless I reminded myself that I will see your goodness in the land that I'm living. Amen. Come on, you gotta, you got to understand who is God. Look at Nahum 1.7. The Bible tells you about God. The Bible reveals who God is. In fact, God introduces himself. How many of you have ever, you remember the years of dating? And somebody said, oh, that's a really good guy. And then you date the guy, and he ain't a good guy. Right? Or he might say he's a good guy, but he wasn't a good guy or a good girl or whatever. Uh, if it, you know, opposite, you know what I'm saying? Not that they 
choose to identify themselves as. Okay, that's that's the the weird. That ain't that that ain't it. Say it with me. Say it with me. That ain't it. That ain't it. Thank you, thank you. That ain't it. Amen. Say it with some sauce. That ain't it. Now. You know, I mean, kids used to be able to open up, uh, you know, if you were a boy, you open up, there's a G.I. Joe doll. How many ever had a G.I. Joe doll with the, with the scar, man, of a true warrior? Remember that? And remember Action Jackson? Remember that? Y'all remember Action Jackson with the Kung Fu grip? Remember that? And then, you know, then it came out G.I. Jane. Remember G.I. Jane? And then now they got this weird stuff, G.I. Don't Know doll. It's just crazy. Look at Nahum chapter 1, verse 7. It's true. And they got accessory parts so you can dress it up for whatever you want to pretend that it is in your land of make-believe. I mean, that's really what they want us to do in real life. The Lord is what? Ooh, say it. The Lord is good. I mean, come on, how many of you remember years ago, Mom, you would remember this, where we used to say a prayer, and we'd have to pray. We get our plate of food. Now, in my family, we had seven kids, two adults, and so what we got most nights was slop. And, uh, <laughs> Mom, I'm only messing with you. Mom, can I, can I have a moment up here, please? Is it okay? So, you know that big silver, big pot, right? With one label. Label, ladle, ladle. And my mom would make whatever. And she would put it up, and each got a portion of slop. Isn't that right, Mom? No. She said no. Okay. For the record, honor thy mother and father in the Lord, for this is right, that it would be well with thee. I changed my words. It was not slop, but in the mind of a kid, it, 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 it certainly looked like that. But it was food. Mom, was it food? At least we can agree it was food. And so she would put this food down out of the silver ladle thing, pot, and then we would pray. And here's our prayer. God is good. God is great. And we thank Him for our food. Amen. Now, I changed those words with Brenda. Oh, yeah. She puts that stuff on my plate. She's like, you're going to pray? Oh, yeah. God, you're good. God, you're great. I'm so hungry, I can't wait. And then I just, you know, start eating. So, you know, we change it up over the years, you know, for the next generation. But watch this. Y'all remember that prayer? So we were, you, know, you guys are getting harder to preach to every week. I mean, you know, you just really are. But, but it's true. I mean, think about how powerful that prayer is, even though we probably didn't even mean it or know it. At least I didn't. God, you're good. God, you're great. Man, teaching kids at a young age, because think about how many people think that God kills them, you know, that God, you know, uh, you know, hurricane happens, you know, oh, it's an act of God, you know. But look here, the Lord is what? The Lord is good. And he is a what? A stronghold. You know what's a stronghold? I'm going to tell you what you can hold on to. If you understand that God is absolutely 100% always good. You will never have a problem holding on or having God as a stronghold in anything that you face. Because you'll know Romans 8. All things work together for those who love God, right? And are called according to His purpose. So you have to have that as your, your, your basis of your understanding, your revelation, your theology, your experience. God, you're a good God. And because of that, you're my stronghold in the day of any trouble and watch this. This is serious. And God knows those that trust him. And he knows those that don't trust him. I don't want to be on the side of those that don't trust him. Now watch this. Look at John 10, verse uh, 10 and 11. So Jesus identifies himself as the good shepherd in the book of, of John chapter 10. You can read that for yourself. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And I lay my life down for the sheep. So now he's talking to the people, and he says these words, and he's talking about the devil. And he says, the devil comes, watch this, watch what the devil comes to do. He comes to what? Kill, steal, and destroy. All right? Did Jesus say, and I do the same? No. There's a colon. There's a pause. There's a separation. 
Jesus on purpose is wanting you to pause and realize what did he just say? He clarified. This is the God that doesn't lie. Jesus said, look, boys, if you've seen me, you've seen my dad. Acts 10, 38, Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for the Lord was with him. So anything that you see with Jesus should reveal just how great God is. So Jesus is telling you, pause. There's a separation. Remember what we talked about. The devil steals, the devil kills, and the devil destroys. Now watch this. Here's the pause. Jesus, you could insert, but I have come that you might have what? Life. life. Now underline that word life. That's the word zoe. It's in the Greek, and it means the God kind of life. So Jesus, now in the English, we're just calling it life. But if Jesus was literally speaking down in the Greek, he would say, I, but I have come to give you, watch this, here's the definition of that word life. But I've come to give you health. I've come to give you healing. I've come to give you the kind of health that you don't ever have to be sick again. I've come to give you blessing, prosperity, soundness of mind, rescue. Grace, help, come on. And the list goes on and on and on. And he said, not just a little bit, but I've come to do it abundantly. God wants you to live an abundant kind of covenant life. That's his promise. So you have to understand that if you believe that God is a good God. Now watch this. Look at Exodus chapter 33, verse 18. We're almost done. In Exodus 33, I love this. Moses is spending time with God. And this, this is so amazing to me. And I'm going to tell you something. This is the year that we need to really, really get on fire for God. You say, well, Pastor Rank, how do I do that? Don't get around what I call the noun. Examine the people that you're around. Come on, if you're around people that are worldly all the time, I'm not saying you can't reach them, shouldn't reach them. But if they're pulling you down, or at least at best, keeping you from being on fire, then you're spending way too much time with them. So who are the people? You know, I'd rather be alone than hang around a bunch of compromised, woke Christians who are having preachers that aren't bold about anything and want to just preach to you a nice message because it's more about them growing their church and having numbers and money than it is about telling you the truth and trying to save your freedoms. Right? So watch the people, watch the places. Well, it doesn't have to be bad places. I'm not talking about going out to the tavern or whatever only. But, but think about the places. You know, if all you're doing all the time is just hanging out with, with things that steal, you know, your time away from God and godly things, then obviously that's going to keep you from being on fire. You can always follow where your money goes. And then the things. What are some of the things that you are occupied in? You know, I had to look at my list this year of a lot of things and say, and I said to people, I'm not doing this. I'm sorry I committed to other things before. Uh, I was part of a few boards, and I said, I can't do it this year. I have to, I have to redirect my time. You know, so you have to look, because I want to stay on fire. I don't want to get bogged down. Moses is looking at God, says, Lord, I, I beg you. I want to see your glory. And notice the first thing that God answers in verse 19. Watch this. And God said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. Some of you need to pray that. Psalm 23, verse 6. Surely, come on, you can expect it. You can mark it down. Goodness and mercy shall follow me this day, all the days of my life and every day. My wife, my children, my dogs, come on, my church family, my partners. And now, he says, and I'll proclaim the name of the Lord before you, and I will be gracious to whom I'm gracious, and I'll show mercy on whom I'll show mercy. So now, God, in Exodus 34, verses 6, he, he now passes before him, and he proclaims his name. See, like I said before, you get people that maybe, you know, they say, oh, that's a good guy. Well, they're not. Well, Moses, he discovered just how good God is. And the Lord passed by him and proclaimed, watch, he proclaimed his name, the Lord. The Lord God. Now, look at what he's proclaiming about himself. He could have picked everything. He could have said, the Lord God, patient. The Lord God, an artist. The Lord God likes rock and roll music. But he didn't do that. Notice what God chose in his introduction to highlight. Right? Merciful. Gracious. Long-suffering. God, you are amazing. 
makes me cry. Abundant in goodness and truth. We love you, Father. All right, now, let's go on. So, I showed you the first four things. We talked about get a revelation of God. Pastor Doug, you can come. The last thing I want to show you is the first four words of the Bible. If you want to have a year of goodness, you have to understand that God is not a liar. He said, let God be true and every man a liar. God is not a liar. If he said he's good, he is. He showed it by an innocent man, Messiah, Jesus Christ, and his precious blood that flowed out of his veins to give you a covenant of life and life more abundantly. All right, look at just a couple scriptures and we're going to close. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So notice the first four words. In the beginning, God. Start with those four words. Start with God. Your marriage, your finances, come on, your children. Amen. Right? Yeah. You know, Brenda and I, we pray together almost every day. We put God in the middle of it. You know, act like Christ. I'm not talking about, you know, Jesus when he went in and turned over the kitchen tables and drove the spouse out. I'm not talking about that. Right? Some people's translations. I'm talking about in the beginning, God. Start with God. Pray together. Put God in the middle of what you do. Amen? Seriously, look for ways. You know, lay hands on your pets, man. Introduce God to them. Right? Speak God over your finances. Involve God in your finances. Involve God in your body. Don't just, you know, speak wrong over your body. Thank God for His goodness that provided a covenant that you're healthy. And that you're already healed according to 1 Peter 2.24 and Isaiah 53. By his stripes you're already healed. You were healed. It's done. It's, it's finished in the cross. And through his blood. All right. In the beginning, God. And notice the next thing that happens. Creation. Something created. In the beginning, God created. Some people want things to manifest in their year of goodness. But they don't want to include God. Some people want supernatural intervention. But they don't want to include God. Start with God and watch how things are created. Now, let's read on. Watch the condition of the earth. Very quickly, we're almost done. And the earth was without form, void, darkness upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, watch this, verse 3. And God, what? Said. Notice he didn't say, oh, there's darkness. Now, the Bible records the condition of the earth, but you don't see God saying it. God said, let there be light. And there was what? Like, too many people are speaking what is, rather than speaking their expectation. It might be dark. It might look evil. God could have said, oh, the earth is without form, void, darkness on the face of the deep. Uh, the, the deep. No, he, he countered it. And he spoke his expectation. Some people get up in the morning and they expect it to be a bad day. They expect it to be a long week. And they say, oh, it's going to be a long week. Well, that's what you're going to get. Speak words of goodness and faith over your life, over your body, over your, 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 you know, your work. Notice, God said, now look at verse 4. Let there be light. And then verse 4, God saw. So notice God said before he saw. And you can go through scripture and you can see how many examples stand to your feet of how many times that God said, God said, God said, God said, God said. And then he saw. Most people want to see something. They want to see a manifestation. They want to experience something. Oh, I want to see that it's going to be a year of goodness. Well, you got to start saying it. Come into agreement with what God said. And I'm just going to hit this real quick. God didn't speak his experience. He spoke his expectation. Interesting. Genesis 1, the word God, Elohim, is mentioned 35 times. God said is mentioned 10 times. God saw is only mentioned 7 times. And so it's important that you start your day with the expectation by aligning the words of your mouth. Last scripture. Put up Psalm 34. Or no. Yeah. Psalm 34. Uh, verse 12, I believe it is. Psalm 34, verse 12. I'm going to ask you a question. We're closing with this, I promise. Look at verse 12. And those of you that are watching. All right. I'm going to ask you a question before you show the answer. How many of you want this verse? Here's what this verse says. How many of you in here, you desire a good life? Yeah. Raise your hand. Come on, get in agreement with what I'm saying. Amen. 
Okay, you want a good life? Come on, raise your hand if you're watching. And watch this. And how many of you want to love many days? Or how many of you want to have long life? Come on, come on. And how many of you want to see good days? Good days. All right. The answer is the next verse. How do you do it? Watch this. Keep your mouth right. God said, then he saw. Keep your tongue from speaking evil or unbelief or even all the things that are happening. Come on. Let your tongue start speaking faith. And your lips, keep them from speaking deceit. Align your mouth right. And watch what kind of year you're going to have. You know what you need to say? Say this with me. Say, Lord, this is a year of goodness. This year, every day, I'm going to see your goodness. Your goodness is going to follow me. And your mercy. I choose to declare this is a year of health, healing, wholeness, long life, blessing, protection, and incredible extravagant love from your hand of goodness in Jesus name Pastor Doug come thank you wasn't that a good word today the goodness of God he's so good and the good news is he not only has a great plan for goodness on this earth but he also has a plan for us to have goodness with him for eternity you know, it's never God's plan or His desire to send people to hell. Amen. People send themselves to hell because they don't make a decision to receive the goodness of God. We have to make a decision because He doesn't force us. And uh, so I'm just going to ask you to bow your heads with me today because I don't want anyone here to leave and not know 100% that you have the ability to not only live a great life on this earth and have God's plan working with you and walking hand in hand with God, but I want to know and God wants to know that you have made a decision to serve Him so that you can spend eternity with Him. And that's the most important thing that you can ever do. The most important decision that you can ever make is one that says, I'm going to line up with God's plan on this earth so that I can live with Him for eternity. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to be lost in hell. I want to do it right. You know, and I told the, the group at the, the earlier service today, I said, here's the deal. The decisions that you make in this short time that we have on earth will impact you for eternity. Amen. The decisions you make on this earth in this short time that we have compared to all of eternity, that decision in that time will make up the difference. Do you accept Jesus now and do you give the Lord full control of your life while you're on this earth so that he can work with you and through you and you can have a wonderful life. So I'm going to ask you a question today. Is there someone here under the sound of my voice and maybe you're watching online and you say, Pastor Doug, I'm not 100% sure that I have ever really bowed my knee to the Lord, that I've ever made him Lord and Savior of my life and that I know for sure that I would go to heaven if I left this earth. If something happened that you were in eternity today and Jesus asked you, why should I let you into my heaven? What would your answer be? Would it be that I've tried to be a good person? I've never robbed a bank. I've never stolen from my employer. I always tried to be a good husband or wife. Maybe I tried to attend church as often as I could. You know, here's the sad thing about that. None of those answers would get you in because we can't do it on our own works and our own goodness. We, we, the Bible says our righteousness is really as filthy rags. The only way that we can get in is through Jesus and accepting what he's done for our life. When we do that, we're in because he washes us clean of any sin and gives us that opportunity to stand righteous, not because of what we've done, but because of what he's done for us. And that's what we have to receive. So I'm going to ask, is there someone here? And you say, Pastor Doug, I want you to pray for me. I need to make sure that this is my day to receive Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you're here or if you're watching online, raise your hand wherever you're at. Do I have any hands here today? And you want prayer. You want to come forward like the lady did 
in the earlier service today and she made it right. Is there anyone here? Okay, I, this is a kind of a believers meeting today, I believe. They're all saying you're in, but we're going to just pray together and uh, agree so that the, those watching online, the thousands that are watching can uh, agree with us and we're going to believe that everyone has that opportunity. So why don't you repeat after me as I pray right now. Father, thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you that he went to the cross. He died for me. He was buried. And he rose again on the third day. And today, I acknowledge that. I make Jesus the Lord of my life. I repent of sin in my life. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Make me a new creature. Save me. I want to be in eternity with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, you're in. And uh, you can write us, call us, email us, and we'll send information to you and help you in your walk with the Lord. I'd ask our altar team to come forward now. If you need prayer for anything in your life, you can run up here as we're departing today. And I've got about two or three little quick announcements I want to give you before I dismiss you. Um, how many of you know this is the start today of our prayer and fasting time that we do every January, and it runs from today until January 30th. And if you need information on uh, things to pray for and fasting, uh, you can go down to our information center, which is just to your right as you go out there, and they have a sheet that has prayer requests on it. You can be in agreement with the rest of the corporate body, and it also gives you times that we're gathering here for prayer. If you're watching online, you want to be part of that, you can go to hankandbrenda.org, hankandbrenda.org, and you'll see a fasting and prayer banner there. Click on that. It'll give you information on fasting, and it'll give you information on the things that we're praying for here locally as a corporate body, and you can join in from around the world and agree with us for this nation, for our church, and for your lives uh, to be turned uh, for God and with God and following His plan. Don't forget Winterfest, which is an event that's happening on February 3rd at Henry Dorley Zoo. That's just a great fellowship time for us to come together. It's a buffet meal. The Scott Aquarium will be open for you to tour through, and it'll be a great time to get together with the Lord of Hosts family. The tickets are available down in the Connect Shop, $24 a piece for adults, $10 for children, and that'll be a great time of fellowship, but we have a limited number of tickets, uh, so make sure you take advantage of that. Uh, for those of you that are interested in the biblical citizenship class that has been talked about on Flashpoint, how many of you have heard Rick Green talk about um, the Patriot Academy and his plan? We're gonna be doing that class. It'll be an eight-week class be held here, here in March. So you'll be getting more information for that. I just wanted you to know that that was coming. And don't forget Flashpoint Tuesday, 7 o'clock Central Time. You can go to the Go Victory Network and uh, watch that. And Pastor Hank will be there Tuesday night at 7. And then midweek recharge right back here, 7 o'clock Wednesday night. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Thank you for coming. And uh, online audience, thank you for tuning in today. We'll see you again Wednesday night. Thank you.